Thrombosis TV here at the 2015 ISTH conference in Toronto. I'm Thomas Baldrick. We are pleased to have with us now Dr. Alex Byropoulos from the North Shore LIJ Health System in Long Island, New York. Thank you, sir, for coming by. Thanks for having me. So what was the bridge study? What can you tell us about it? Well, the bridge study uh, was a landmark clinical trial, and it was meant to be a simple study that would ask and answer a simple question. Is bridging therapy necessary in patients on chronic warfarin with at least one stroke risk factor who need temporary interruption of the warfarin for an elective procedure surgery? So an important question that you had to ask. Absolutely. So we think in the U.S. alone, uh, maybe upwards of a quarter of a million to even half a million patients on chronic warfarin are assessed annually in paraprocedural settings. So very large patient group. So what are the primary results that you've presented so far? Well, what was presented at this meeting just a few hours ago by Dr. Tom Ortel was the fact that uh, bridging therapy using low liquid heparin and treatment doses uh, leads to no significant reductions in post-procedural arterial thromboembolic events and incurs a nearly threefold increased risk of major bleeding post-procedurally. So how should these results be applied? Well, we think actually what it does is it simplifies the paraprocedural management of patients on warfarin uh, because all of a sudden bridging therapy incurs cost, incurs inconvenience to the patient, and now we find with the bridge study incurs actually an increase in adverse outcomes. So uh, using the bridge study results, patients on chronic warfarin simply need to stop their warfarin about five to six days before the procedure and then simply restart their warfarin after the procedure with no heparin bridging therapy. Now you've closed this study but you still have some further work to do? Yes we do. So we have further analysis to do in patients uh, for example who had antiplatelet regimens uh, which again we were allowed during the course of the study so the antiplatelet part was as per the discretion of the local investigator. So we still have a lot of analysis to do within the bridge trial but I think now the fundamental question has been asked and answered. Uh, bridging therapy does not appear to be necessary in this patient population in this situation and appears also to incur harm post-procedurally. Very good. Thank you, doctor. Good luck in wrapping it up. We appreciate your time. Thank you.